for the, you got up this morning, you're alive, you can see, you can hear. Do not take that for granted. Give God thanks for life. Yes, as I was saying, of course, pray with the kids, kiss them, send them off to school, show them that you love them. All right, today's a special day, of course, in our history here in Tobago. And of course, that has to do with uh, the presence of uh, Her Excellency Paula May Weeks, and she would be uh, here uh, carrying out uh, official duties. All right, just a little bit about uh, Her Excellency Paula May Weeks. Uh, she was born on the 23rd December 1958. Uh, she is the sixth and the current president of, the Trin of Trinidad and Tobago. She took office in, on 19 March 2018 and became the first woman to have hold the office of president. Uh, her career, uh, uh, Her Excellency attended the University of the West Indies, Cave Hill, from which she graduated with a Bachelor of Law degree and the Hewing, Hugh Wooding Law School and was called to the bar in 1982. After graduating, she worked uh, in the office of the Director of Public Prosecution for 11 years uh, before going into private practice in 1993. She was appointed to the judiciary in 1996 and to the Court of Appeal in 2005, where she served until her retirement in 2016. She served briefly as Acting Chief Justice in 2012 after Acting Chief Justice Wendell Kangaloo was injured in a car accident. In September 2016, Weeks was appointed to the Appeal Court in the Turks and Caicos, and of course, uh, on the 5th January 2018, weeks uh, then the judge of the Turks and Caicos Island Court of Appeal was put forward as presidential candidate by the People's National Movement Government of the Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Rowley, in hope of reaching a consensus with the, then, with the UNC National Congress led parliamentary opposition uh, under Mrs. Kamala Passat Bissessa, which later endorsed her nomination her and of course she's today uh the president of the republic of trinidad and tobago uh just a little bit about that and of course just to let you know what is going to happen today there will not be a parade there will be what is called a quarter guard to greet madam her excellency madam paula may weeks uh a quarter guard comprises of a maximum of 14 soldiers. Uh, it may or may not be inspected. In the past, the president's visit, there was a guard of honor. But for this occasion, it will only be a quarter guard. All right, so that's said. And of course, we <laughs> today, of course, as I said, a very historic day. And we will have the official visit of Her Excellency, Madam Paula May Weeks. And of course, we all look forward to that. Uh, I understand that she would have visited a couple of schools uh, in Tobago uh, while being here. And, of course, I think that that would have been something significant for the children of the schools that were selected for her visit. And, of course, just to give you a little bit of information, of course, being the sixth president of the republic, of course, uh, the first president of the republic, uh, he was sworn in as Sir Ellis Clark, and he, was, uh, uh, he took up office September uh, 24th, 1976, and he served up until March 19, 1987. Uh, preceding him was uh, Mr. Noor Hassan Ali. Uh, he served from March 20th to 1987, uh, up until, well, he served from the 20th March 1987 to the 17th March 1997. 1987 to 1997. Yeah, getting the seven is clear. And of course, after him, we move to uh, his, well, <laughs> Arthur Napoleon Raymond Robinson. And he served from the 18th of March 1997 to March 16th, 20, uh, 2003. <laughs> and of course, <laughs> yeah, so he would have served. And of course, you know, he was. The first, and let me just give you, Arthur Napoleon Raymond Robinson, now deceased, succeeded Arthur, uh, uh, Mr. Hassan Ali as president of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago and served in the office from 1997 to 2003. He was previously prime minister, and that was the first ever, eh? uh, from 1986 to 1991, uh, during which time he was uh, a member 
of the National Alliance for Reconstruction, Mr. Robinson was the first active politician to hold the office or to be elected as president of the republic. After that was George Maxwell Richards, and he would have served from March 17, 2003 to March 18, 2013. And of course, moving around to uh, uh, His Excellency Anthony Thomas Aquinas Carmona, and he served from March 17, 2017 to March 18, 2018. And of course, uh, and of course, now we do have presently Her Excellency Paul Obeweeks sitting president. Right. So there's, you know, and of course, we look forward to the whole experience and to her speech and what that will be. But later on, just to let you know, in a few minutes, rather, we have a number of guests line up and we are dealing with first ladies. Yeah, because <laughs> and uh, to start it off, we have the first lady who would have served from Tobago. The first lady would have served as an uh, acting prime minister. Yes, uh, and that would be, and I think she likes to get to be, well, of course, we, 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 we take that with great pride. Uh, a female from Tobago would have acted as prime minister. And, of course, we're talking none other than uh, my good friend, Miss, uh, Miss, yes, sir, we'll get it here. <laughs> it's right on my tongue, but he just doesn't come in. I've got Vanilla Allen Tobin. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, that's the thing about this thing. Eh? Sometimes you have it right on the lips and it's not coming. But anyway, and after her, we will have Miss Agnes Williams. And we, uh, Deborah Mormigan. So all of these ladies would have served in some position or in, uh, uh, in, in, that, in their field uh, for the first. And so or they would be one of the first, as it were. So at this point in time, we're just about ready to go to break. And as, we, as soon as I get the cue, we will do that. And when we come back, our guests will join us here. All right? So we take our first break. See you immediately after.
welcome back. Of course, we are coming to you live from the legislature of the Tobago House of Assembly. For this morning, given today is a historic day, and of course, uh, Her Excellency will be uh, present, and of course, we look forward to her speech. Our guest this morning, one of many, uh, first one of the first ladies to have acted as Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, uh, Trinidad and Tobago. We're talking about Miss Vanilla Allen Toppin, and she's former Minister of Tobago East, uh, for, for MP for Tobago East. And MP for Tobago. Very good. Good morning, ma'am. How are you? Morning. Right. <laughs> Thank you for having uh, me here. So, so let's talk good first. Good morning to viewers everywhere yes. in the diaspora and in our country. Very good. All right. So this morning we are acknowledging, recognizing first ladies in Tobago. And of course, treating with the fact that uh, Miss uh, Madam, Ex Her Excellency is the first female president. From that standpoint, I just want you to give me your perspective as a f as female in leadership positions. Ah, well, you know, leaders, women as leaders, are, are becoming more and more um, in our societies and in the societies abroad. Women are becoming more and more accepted as leaders. It used to be like this is a man's world, mm -hmm. but now we have been working at that glass ceiling and we are actually breaking through the glass, glass ceiling. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a difference for me in the leadership of a woman from a, the leadership of a man. There is more sensitivity mm -hmm. to, the, yeah. to the needs yes. of people. Yeah. When I went into the politics, I went in on the principles of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And some of some of that says there's a need for shelter there's a need for well security there's a need for um, food clothing whatever but the essence of womanhood is nurturing a woman brings to the table a kind of nurturing that i imagine most men will not be able to to give and i think it comes from our natural gifts as caregivers and we accept the responsibility of that, and we also accept the responsibility of the academics and the intellectual and the leadership, and we really are equipped to lead humbly. Mm -hmm. A woman mostly, I mean, we defer to the men, but we do lead humbly. Mm -hmm. So for Her Excellency Paula May Weeks, congratulations, of course, and she is, of course, embracing the job, doing an excellent job, and I applaud her, and I applaud women everywhere for the kind of uh, leadership that we bring. Very leadership good. also shapes, effective leadership shapes consensus. And you find that there's an ethos that goes with the leadership of a woman who is as profoundly uh, sincere and deep in her philosophy as Paula May Weeks right. has shown herself but to be. I just want to, given that you have a historical, you have uh, I don't want to. Uh, you have a you have a history or background in history, right? And yes. of course, so let's talk a little bit about from that historical standpoint, mm -hmm. women who would have been leaders back then when they were uh, concerned or uh, considered in, with their colleagues to be uh, behind the man, not necessarily side by side. Uh, for example, you had Margaret Thatcher as Prime Minister of yes. uh, of England at that yes. time, yes. Eugenia in in, in Dominica here. In Dominica. From that was, from that standpoint, women were never necessarily considered to be in the back because their presence were felt from as early as that time. Tell us a little. Well, you could go much further than that. Yes. You could go right back into Egypt and into parts of Africa where you had many women leaders. You had people like, of course, Cleopatra and Nefertiti. And, you know, you could go on and on with the women. Uh, women were always very strong, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, the strength was subsumed by the dominance of the male. Yes. But the women were always strong. You could go to Rosa Parks and people like those who were leaders in the sense of... Um, what, we, what I call positive Leadership. rebellion. Okay. Posit, you know, mm. there's, there's negative and there's positive. Eh? Mm. You could be rebellious, but positively, so to effect change in the way human beings are treated, in the way women are treated, in the way people mm. in general, re, because of race, because of gender, because of uh, choice of how you live, you know, lifestyle choices, like mm. whether you want to be. What kind of partner, spouse, what, you mm -hmm. know what I'm talking about, which I would not, you know, yes. I want to elaborate on here. Mm -hmm. But we have had President of um, Prime Minister of New Zealand, yes. a woman. We have had Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Australia. 
Australia, we have had uh, in England. Well, England has spoken that for quite a while back. Yes. With Margaret Thatcher. After Margaret Thatcher. We, have, we, have, yeah. we have had, you know, many, mm. many examples. Brazil, mm. many examples of women in leadership. Yes. All right. And right mm. home here in Trinidad and Tobago, I mean, obviously you spoke about Jamaica. And of course, before Jamaica, we had, as I said, in uh, Dominica, Yes. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. The Iron so, Lady. Yeah, they, well, they were considered Iron Lady yes. because it was a dominant rule. Uh, from it was yes. a place where men were dominant, would be dominant. But, but, but however, but have, so bringing home now. I have found. I have found there. Eh? Mm. I have found, and I had been schooled by my mother that uh, this might seem controversial, but women leaders very often do not get the support of women. Okay. Why is that? <laughs> why, why is that? Tell me why. Women leaders, and I think people who are listening will yeah. appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Women leaders do not always and often get the support of men. Of women? You of women. Uh -huh. But they also do not get the support of men. <laughs> and, and often, women leaders in their home, yeah. they're not leaders in the home. Mm -hmm. When a leader is the prime minister, mm -hmm. but in the home, you defer to the man. Mm -hmm. It is a very delicate balancing act mm -hmm. but women actually really don't often get the support of women <laughs> well that opened a, a whole uh, and, and other, yes. and of if course, we had to uh, talk about yes. the united states of america and the present leadership without going into any details of the present mm -hmm. leadership we all see what's going on if we had to talk about the choice between uh donald trump and hillary clinton mm -hmm. had the women supported hillary clinton she would have she been would have president won. today Notwithstanding the, the issues about Russia, mm -hmm. that we are not clear on whether that really did take the whole of the election mm -hmm. into uh, the hands of Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. But had the woman supported, but I had talked to quite a few women from the United States of America and said, she cannot be trusted. She's the, e the email thing. And Okay. So, but yes. notwithstanding all the things that came the out about the man, the support, the women. The women. Do support. So all we right. ourselves, we have to be more sisterly. <laughs> we have to be right. more sisterly. I like that angle. All right. No. So let's come home now to our yes. own female, first female prime minister, Kamala Prasad Bisesa, okay. of which you were under her uh, leadership. Yes. Um, and I let's say talk good morning about, and hello to her. Of course, and that is a yes. that is a milestone we have never seen that in Trinidad. And then we come to the first president. All right. So let's well, deal a little bit from that standpoint. The fact that she were in she uh, uh, Kamala Prasad, this is a Miss Kamala Prasad, this is mm -hmm. was endorsed by men who would have supported her throughout the entire campaign up to until she became prime minister. Your role yes. as the Tobago representative at that time and the role of women in leadership from that position standpoint. Well. Kamala Prasad Bissessa is Honorable Kamala Prasad Bissessa is an excellent leader. I must say, she, there's something about the, the, the first, the opening of the speech, of inaugural speech of Paula May Weeks, Her Excellency, which gives me uh, access, really, a move into speaking about the leadership of Kamala Prasad Bissessa. Now, she gave me the position of Minister of Tobago Development. Mm -hmm. And she gave me the authority and the leeway and the space to develop that place into whatever the schedule said it should be and whatever I wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. And I've seen where in her inaugural speech, Her Excellency Paula May Weeks has, had said that she looked up for the duties of the roles and functions of the president when she was um, apprised of the possibility that she would become the president. And there was no definite role except, for, well, functions, but, you know, role. Role means, well, how you, how you shift, how you organize, what do you, what do you interfere with, what don't you interfere with. And she said she decided, and I could read it for you, mm -hmm. right? Before the date of assumption of any position, the candidate had better be clear about the job description. With that in mind, I first looked at the Constitution, and while it outlined certain duties and functions of the president, the whole office holder's role was not defined. Then, aided by memory, anecdote, and available material, I analyzed the leadership and decision-making styles of my predecessors in office. This unscientific research led me to the conclusion that it falls to each president to define within prescribed limits his, or in this case, 
her own role. Mm -hmm. After much deliberation, I identified my role as humble first servant with a mandate to render service with enthusiasm. Right. So, Kamala Pusat Bissessa's leadership gives you the opportunity, the leeway to render service with enthusiasm, but you have to shape your... Very good. And and let's I mean, as, as acting prime minister, let's I, talk I, about I, that I now. Saying. Now let's come into you now as the woman who would have acted, uh, even though well, it was for a short well, stay. But I want to just deal with the, fact, six days. the responsibility. Six. What was that like uh, as a as a woman? Uh, one from Tobago, two having to lead <coughs> the cabinet and all of that for six days. Tell us about what what that, what was well, that like? My mother, Elaine Allen, my mother prepared me for all of that without knowing that <laughs> tell us, tell us about she my mother well, used to be a teacher and i should say my mother and father but most of my mother my mother taught us my sister and, and me taught us how to laugh how to talk how to sit how to stand how to walk mm. you have to put a book on your head and walk with your heels in the house <laughs> and she said all the time i am training you all for the world wow so we we had a very british upbringing mm -hmm. we had a dinner bell we had to come to the table we had to eat with a knife and fork every day so much so that my food tastes better if i have a knife and fork mm -hmm. because i get it you, in my mouth easier yeah, yeah? Mm -hmm. so they brought us up in a very kind of and the whole family was like that mm -hmm. they brought us up in a kind of way that you don't you didn't know where you were going to go exactly. you had to speak properly you had to speak perfect english to daddy mm. otherwise he would say i do not understand what you wow. are saying you have to repeat. and he was a shallow Correct. film man right so in the extended family the the sisters the aunts the uncles everybody had the same upbringing mm. and a very strong grandmother very good. i'm a kenna lady so we we were prepared so when yeah, when they came to the point where well i didn't expect that at all but when <laughs> they came to the point where she said she wanted me to act prime minister I said to her, well, you have to coach me. Tell me what, what, what should nervous? I do? Were you afraid? No, you worried? I was never afraid. Or I can't be ready? afraid because like, I'm prepared yeah, exactly for life. Yeah. I, when she asked me to uh, assume the position, that post, I said, well, to coach me. She said, um, after a few days, because she gave me that on the Thursday and then I had to start on the Monday, she would give me nothing at all. So uh, eventually she one day she said, woman, home and get some rest <laughs> and that is all of it she said the attorney general will hold your hand the leader of government business hold your hand. so i was able to lead the cabinet i was able to lead the um the the, the parliament i passed a bill for tobago what was the bill the tell parliament. us about that the bill, bill was the elections and boundaries bill that mm -hmm. every time you're going to have an election to be also the same election there's something that comes up that you have to talk about and you have to make sure it's put into the law put into the answer all of the uh, ramifications of that. So and that was the bill. All right. So the cabinet, uh, I led the about... cabinet. But I led the cabinet. No, no, let's go <laughs> back to the bill. Very uh -huh. important, very significant. Yes. And that would be your legacy. Uh, okay, yes. 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 All right. So let's talk the a little bit about too. the bill and how what the process was like. Uh, tell us from, you know, from uh, how, it, how it came about to being in the first place. Well, the leader of government business uh, would bring the bill to the House mm -hmm. and they would appoint certain speakers. So before that you have your caucus and you decide who will say what and who will do what and who will present what so just as acting prime minister i was um i had to sit in the prime minister's chair they don't call you acting prime minister you know actually they call, they call you prime, prime minister, minister. Exactly. They, they, when you sit in the in the airport and you, the person is prime minister is going out there's a period after which they tell you um the airplane has gone out of the limits of trinidad and tobago the the, the boundaries and they come to you then and say, you are now Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago. And from that moment, you don't belong to yourself again. <laughs> because the security, security is security everywhere, everything everywhere. Is right, right. If you go to the bathroom, yes. if the, and your female, the female security will come. Yes. They won't actually see what you're doing, yes, but, but they, they will know. very well be there listening to, see you, to hear what you are doing. <laughs> so there's absolutely no Yeah, did that time. blow you away because of the, you know, Obviously, the first time. Well, How was that? Like? Well, well, I, I don't know. All right. Okay. So, so, <laughs> I don't know. Right. so get into the bill. Yeah. So the bill was passed as a yes. result of yes, yeah. yes. But the process. We had, we had. Um, I had to do some arguing because I talked about uh, a little bit about how 
how the boundaries have been changed and that I thought we should have three seats and things like that. But then there was so much heckling and cross talk from the from the other from the yes. opposition. Yes. That after a time, I you know I just yes. conceded and left it. It will go anyway. It's okay. not, you know. But what afterwards, yes. you know, Benny Beckles told me, well, well, what did why did you say okay, thank you, um, Mr. Speaker? I said, well, I was thinking maybe I'm doing something. Something strange, something wrong. And she said, no, you're going so well. Yes. <laughs> Why did you stop? We have to heckle you. Yes. You know, so it is like that. that. All right, but so I love the parliament, I love the debate. Yeah. The, right. the, the, um, the, mm -hmm. the cabinet, mm -hmm. when I went to, I had to all right. read all the notes. Let's leave, the that. Cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave that there until we come back <laughs> oh, after the break. Okay. When we do, we go for a break. When we come back, we continue <laughs> with our guest, very, um, of course, at first, mm -hmm. First acting uh, prime minister, female from Tobago. All right, so we go for a break. See you then. Welcome back, welcome back. And of course, we are coming to you live from the legislature of the Tobago House of Assembly. Today being a historic day, Her Excellency Paula, Paula May Weeks will make her first speech here in Tobago, officially. Of course, we are talking with Ms. Vanilla Toppin, Ms. Vanilla Allen Toppin, former minister uh, for Tobago uh, Development and member for Parliament Tobago East. And we are talking women in leadership. First ladies, in particular Tobago, given that. Uh, uh, Ms. Tuppin was the first uh, acting prime minister of, from Tobago, female. All right, and we were just about uh, coming, uh, we spoke about uh, the first prime minister, Kamala Prasad, is as a female. Now, uh, your role as acting prime minister, and you, you spoke about the bill that you managed to have passed, mm -hmm. and there was something else. Oh, I was going to, I was about to talk about leading the cabinet. Mm -hmm. Because in those six days, I was able to... Um, 
have that experience as well. Leading the cabinet, I discovered, well, you know, they bring your notes to you, that is private and confidential, and you read the notes. There were 80 notes. 80? 80 that I had to deal with on that cabinet day. And it occurred to me, and reading, going through my notes, now this was kind of a larger amount than usual, and it was also filled with notes that I thought people preferred me to deal with <laughs> than um, Prime Minister yes. herself. Right. So one of the first things I had to do was state that I have read all of the notes and I'm prepared to deal with all of them, mm -hmm. but nothing will pass me that I am sure will not pass her. <laughs> and I'm thinking that some people are trying to slip some things past her <laughs> through me, yes. and that will not happen. So I had to pull out all this stuff. So I'm a really trained, seasoned, long-time teacher, and I don't stand no nonsense when it comes to things. So I had to make sure that everybody, <coughs> excuse me, I had the full attention. I said that to them. I need your full attention. I need you to listen so that you can contribute intelligently. I need you to be fully informed. So there can be no cross-talk on those sides, or nobody can be disrespectful. I was really very strict. I must say that. Very, very strict. And a lot of people were very surprised because that was a cabinet full of men. There were only six women. <laughs> yes. Only six women. So the cross talk, uh, and, how you dealt with that? And no, I, I stopped it from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Everybody was like in shock. Mm -hmm. I said, no, this cannot happen. You cannot treat me as if I'm not here. Yes. You know, you know. Yes. so yes. that <laughs> shut down that. And then I had a little speech about talking in public and talking about a turn. Uh -huh. And some really big men who were very... Um, Amazed that yeah. I would tell them that, but I am afraid nobody except <laughs> God. You see, and if you give me the role to yeah, play, yes. and if you give me the function, I have to do it, and I have to do it to the best of my ability. So all of that goes back to my childhood. Mm -hmm. Things done by house are never done right. So if you do, do it with all your might. Mm -hmm. And then my father brought me up like, oh, you know, Rudyard Kip Kipling's If. And he used, he used to recite If to me. You must look at it. And if you can... Which you of know, the if? There are different if. if. Now, there's Rudyard Kipling's if. Uh, uh. That if tells you, if you can so on, if you can, uh. and if you can hear you, the uh. truths you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, and right. all of that. And there's another if. If, if all the trees were one tree. I have plenty if. Yeah, plenty if. But, 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 <laughs> <laughs> this but if and that is exactly. a lesson. But you see that particular if, it ends, you'll be a man, my son. Very good. But right. it applies to the woman... Mm -hmm just as much as it applies to the man. Yes. And I was his fourth child, and I was his first girl child. Yes. But he used to say, you are my strong son. Very good. You know? All right, so, so you got the, the grooming resolve. and yes, everything. Yes, we had that. And, and then we had debates in our house all mm. the time, all the time, especially political debates. Yes. And everybody had an opinion. You had to be very intelligent to speak. And exactly. You, you spoke, and, you know. And certainly, yeah. So, all right. yeah. So, so let's actually, mm -hmm. actually, what we have to know when we are growing up and when we are going through our youthful years and so on, we have to know that we do not know where we will end up. I tell you. So the way we prepare ourselves, the way we behave, or whatever is our character, will come out and serve us well in the long run. Excellent. And you see, if you can hear the truths you speak, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, I have never spoken one word of lies in Very the parliament. Good. All right. Okay. Not let's one. go. Let's go to to her Excellency. Yes. Her appointment, obviously. Uh, you know, inspire a lot of women, young girls, yes. girls and women, obviously. Uh, this appointment, indeed, historic. Uh, never we had we had that in Trinidad and Tobago. Give us from that perspective, uh, give us your perspective on the, uh, you know, uh, having a female president from, uh, as you being a leader before, uh, during your time. So talk but, to us from that. But time. if you read that same inaugural speech I'm here looking at, mm -hmm. Being a light does not ne necessitate grand schemes or accomplishments. A flickering candle can be as effective as a blazing bushfire in the right environment. Mm -hmm. Be a light in your home, instill discipline, model good behavior. That's especially good. Mm -hmm. Practice punctuality, honesty, and politeness. Or in your school, pay more attention to the lesson that, than to your phone. Mm -hmm. Protect the vulnerable. Respect those in authority. Be a light in your community. Care for your environment. This is an abundance of excellence in character. Okay. And I, she, 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 her excellency, is a consummate citizen of Trinidad and Tobago. Right. 
she is a real what we call well i would call it a trinbegonian mm -hmm. people call it true trini mm -hmm. but trinbegonian she was a marathon runner she used to play pan with power style mm -hmm. you know she has done all kinds of mm -hmm. she lived in trinidad and tobago she, she studied lived in, in Barbados. Yeah. she lived in yes but mm -hmm. she has always been the kind of she understands the essence of society mm -hmm. and while we have the portrait of trinidad mm -hmm. and then stalin paint over the portrait of Trinidad, mm. she has looked at Trinidad in the best and most positive and brightest light. Mm. And uh, that is what you mm. will get from a woman. Yeah. In her speech, there's yes. a point, a line that she, you know, uh, that stayed in my mind. Mm. When you go to work, actually do some work while you're at it. Yes. <laughs> I think that was because that speaks to who we are. Yes, so we we like to, job. you know, and she, she pointed to that yes. as something that we can... Uh, step up on uh, yes. uh, in terms of uh, productivity and the way we go, go forward. Yes. All right, so today is a, a significant day for Tobago. Uh, obviously, um, tell us what does that mean for us here in Tobago, not necessarily treating with the fact that she came as, as, as president and so on, but there is something significant that you might identify. Would you want to share that with us? Well, one of the things that people tried me to get me to do was to be a Tobagonian in Trinidad. Okay. In Trinidad, mm. I'm a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago. Excellent. Acting Prime Minister, you have to have consideration for all of the people. You cannot be Tobago-centric. You cannot be Trinidad-centric. Mm -hmm. As a president, it is also her responsibility to be Trinidad and Tobago-centric okay. and not Trinidad-centric. Mm -hmm. So it is good that she's coming here. It is good that we can listen to her. And it, is, it will be very good for her to embrace Tobago and its difficulties, its challenges, its goods, and its ills. Mm -hmm. And to help us to shape the persona of the new mm -hmm. Tobago in her uh, domain, in her uh, service, her okay. effective mm -hmm. service, bringing Trinidad and Tobago into the positive light that she's trying to bring us in. Very good. All right. Yeah. So she would have served as judge, uh, you know, yeah, in, the uh, in varying in yes. Tuts and Kikas, mm -hmm. of course, and, and this appointment. Obviously, yes. she did not go to the Electoral College. Well, because uh, there was no dissenting voice. There yes. was no other nominee. Yes. So she went straight in. And what uh, does that mean? What does that say to you? As a, uh, the first female, everyone endorsed it. You know, the consensus was clear that they wanted her as president. From that perspective, how do you feel as a woman no. that, that she but went through with all the due process of, of the Electoral College? Well, remember, we talked about that when I was on here with you when... Some when time ago, before yes. She was, mm. um, before she was even ele uh, selected, yes. let me call it mm. that, or nominated or whatever. And there were other nominees. Mm. There were other female nominees. There were male nominees. And for all of us, I mean, for all of us to endorse her mm. is testimony to True. the kind of character, character of being, yes. to the person that we are talking about. Mm -hmm. And it is always good when we can see through all of the problems and the leaves and everything and find what a person's true self is. Mm -hmm. what a, regardless of what other people say about you, one of the things that strengthened me is the philosophy that my parents gave me that other people's opinion of you mm. does not define you. Excellent. Other people's opinion of you does not define you. Mm. And if you are strong, and you have to be strong, you will know that whatever you are, it is very difficult for anybody to really know. Mm. So your actions will speak louder than your voice. Uh, for those women, girls out there who are dreamers and uh -huh. wants to hire, uh, aim for the highest office, no. what is your advice? And in closing, okay. eh, because yes. we get through up now. Of the, the three countries in the world, by, by uh, world consensus, the best place to be born is New Zealand. Uh -huh. A girl, born yeah. a girl. Tell me why. New Zealand, because the opportunities are there, endless. You could do whatever you want to do. You could be whatever you want to be. New Zealand is the first. I lived in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Barbados is the second. Mm -hmm. Barbados is the country I have visited the most. Mm -hmm. And Trinidad and Tobago is the third best place in the world to be born a girl. Okay. So you girls, ladies, you can be whatever you want to be. Do not be subsumed by anybody else's character. We often as women have to pretend we're not right. Eh? 
because the men get a feel a hold <laughs> in their bright. <laughs> but you have to be you have to be able to negotiate through everything and, and let the men feel like them in charge now. Right. You know, yes. you can lead yes. a man by making him feel <laughs> in charge. You, know. you ain't mad about my guy. Yeah. You just have to show a little suggestion and agree or disagree according to right. how you see like he leaning. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then show him because you know, okay. we love our men. Okay. All we right. have to. All right. So the women and girls, just be strong. Yes. Sold your own. Get okay. your education above everything else. All right. Just in case. All right, Mr. Stop. It was indeed a Thank pleasure, you. and of course, Thank you always, for me, uh, you know, Thank I enjoy you. All, every time we have a conversation. Here, so all right, so we have the legislature. We go yes. for a break. When we come back, we have lots more for you. See you then. Yes. Okay. Welcome back. Welcome back. And of course, we are right here live uh, from coming to you live from the legislature. And of course, we continue our conversation. Of course, you know, today is a historic day in Tobago's history, given the first female official, the first female president official visit to Tobago. And of course, we wait for that. Uh, all right. So we are here and we are continuing our conversation about first ladies. And of course, we just had Miss Toppin. Now we have Mrs. Agnes Williams. And of course, uh, she served in the Senate from October 7th, uh, 1997 to February 2000, uh, Parliament of Trinidad and Tobago, one of the first female senators. And of course, we had Miss Sawyer, uh, Dr. Mackenzie, Cynthia Alfred, and Miss Annette Alfred. All right, let's talk about. Good morning, how are you, my dear? Good morning, sir. I'm fine. <laughs> nice to have you, and thank you for, for, for sharing. All right, uh, well, we're going to share. Here. Yes. All right, let's talk about your tenure as woman uh, 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 in the Senate. And you were uh, your your uh, would your it would be your colleague would would have been Mr. Nathaniel Moore. So tell us about your role, and of course we won't get to the controversy when you all were fired and all of that. But just talk as a female, what was that like for you in the parliament? Well, it was a very very interesting time of my life, and I enjoyed serving. I enjoyed serving at that level mm -hmm. because you see, you 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 you. Building framework into the national community, mm -hmm. and one of my, one of the best things I did in the Senate I remembered is when the minimum wages bill mm -hmm. was being passed. I was in that committee, mm -hmm. and we know that ordinary laborers, female laborers, especially domestics, mm -hmm. were being really, really, really disadvantaged. Mm -hmm. And what we did, mm -hmm. <coughs> we insisted we, when I was in the committee, to discuss that particular bill, and which was when the, the men were not really uh, wronged as much as we <laughs> expected, but yeah. we, the women, we saw the uh, his, uh, um, uh, uh, his, uh, his, uh, his, uh, his money, 
Was no, it? no, no. He's his, uh, the, the female. All right, that's what, that, that's what I mean. But all right, okay. We do it there. He's a brown. Yes, he's and we brown. decided that. Um, and Clotilde Walcott, who was the women's, who was with the women's union, we decided that there was no way that we would set the minimum wages bill lower than one US dollar, six dollars. Okay. Because when we checked how women were being treated at in people's homes, overworked, not being paid. And that was a glorious achievement for us. We achieved that, and from then on, we have seen that the minimum wage has been raised over the years. So I think that was one of my most significant contributions <laughs> to the country. <laughs> Great. All right. So, and so that was done, and of course, you, you, you articulated well, and you represented us well. Um, I, I want to get to the controversy a little bit, but uh, before that, as women, and of course, let's deal with, uh, you know, that women have grown in politics more and more. We are seeing prime ministers across the world. Uh, America, uh, Can uh, England is seeing the second female prime minister, Theresa May, uh, right here in the Caribbean. We've seen Portia, Sim Portia Miller uh, in Jamaica and so on. Uh, right here in, in Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, Barbados presently and so on. So from that, what does that make you feel, given that you were in the politics before most of them who would have taken office now? How does that make you feel now as a female? I feel proud that women have always had a place in society and we have now been recognized as being the driving force behind the men. Mm -hmm. And even you go back to the old days, mm -hmm. I remember my mother always taught us lessons at home. My mother's an ordinary housewife. And she taught us, you have to learn to speak the Queen's English <laughs> first before you can talk the local English. Good. So when I got to high school, they asked me, how come you went to school in Montgomery and you speak so differently? I said, you couldn't speak um, local I mean, the ordinary mm -hmm. English in my mother's house. Right. You had to practice all the queens. So I grew up knowing, looking at the queen yeah. as a leader. Okay. And I, I love the queen, I mean, because I said, I used to say, rule Britannia, all this thing. I was really loyal. Yeah. So we grew up knowing that yeah. there is a role for women in the world. You can do it, but then you have to learn to be learn to know how to respect the men. No matter what, you have to find a way to respect the men. Mm -hmm. That's what my mother taught us. Very good. All right, and she taught you well. All right, let's get into the controversy, the the historic uh, firing of the two senators from Tobago, yourself and Nathaniel Moore. Let's talk about what led up to that and your stance on that. I remember you said even Nathaniel Moore, you walk in too. Uh, let's talk about that incident. Oh, well, that, 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 that scenario that made you strong as a woman, I got to say. And that made me famous. Exactly. Oh, yeah, right. well, okay. Let's go. Now, the thing is that um, in that tourism development bill, we realized that it was so worded that Tobago would have had no say in the development of tourism in Tobago. And we felt that as a unitary state, the it was not the best thing for Tobago, so we decided we are not going to pass that particular clause where Trinidad had ultimate authority over everything that is done in Tobago. Mm -hmm. And our then Prime Minister, he didn't like it. It was uh, Bazupani. Yes, and yes. we stood up there, and we stood up to him because we decided that if we have to walk, we have to walk. Mm -hmm. So w at what point did, was the breaking point where the fallout came? When did you decide to walk? At what point? Who was raising the argument? Who was on the floor? And how did it get Which to that? I couldn't remember exactly. But I know the particular point was where it was, that clause was saying that Trinidad had ultimate control and authority over what happens in Tobago. Mm -hmm. There didn't seem to be any space for Tobago to have a voice. Mm -hmm. Even the Tobago House of Assembly was there. So I, I mean, I worked in Tobago with Mr. Robinson, you know, Robinson when he was, um, in charge of Tobago. Mm -hmm. And I knew the struggle we had to get Tobago recognized. Even in fact, when the first, um, when Tobago was given authority to form back the assembly, and the public servants were there under the Tobago House of Assembly Act, I was the first budget analyst to be in charge of the budgets division. And that was a hard job to work under Mr. Robinson to make sure that Tobago got its portion, that all the departments were looked after. It was a tough role, but because of having worked in Trinidad in the hotel department and coming back to Tobago, 
I knew how to handle myself. So I used to run a hard line for Tobago. Mm -hmm. And vice versa, Ministry of Finance, when Pam, and Pam was there. And we had to bargain for money. They would give us a little bit of money, and I would go down to the Ministry of Finance, and I would bargain for money. And the gentleman in charge said, he said to me, um, why do they send you? I said, because I come for money. <laughs> run to be goes to pay all the bills to be we have creditors, we have people we owe salaries to be paid. And I will start with my all right, give me ten million. Mm -hmm. And I will stick around for the whole and I'll talk to him now. Nice. I say, well, give me eight million. Mm -hmm. Eventually if I want five million, I will get you five million. Mm -hmm. And he always said, Why do you send you? I said, Because Tobago mm -hmm. needs money to for the people to survive. Exactly. So I enjoyed it. And then you know there's another thing that happened what I remember doing being at Clark one or acting Clark Two. They had this system in Tobago, in Tobago, in the time Tobago Affairs. I was, it was under Harrison Williams, Elsa G, those people. And uh, one day, the paymaster and I, Cachillo, yes. we had a, an altercation mm -hmm. where he wanted to get his check signed to go and pay the people. And it was lunchtime, and I was having my lunch. And we had a little discussion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> disagreement. Discussion, disagreement, yeah, right. Yeah, that's and, um, Eventually, one day I sat down and I said, this nonsense that they have that every single pay sheet has to have a check, one for the controller, one for the paymaster, one for income tax. You know, this is wasting government's time, energy, money, the paymaster's time. So I sat down and I drafted up a batching system. Hmm. What so is that? Okay, so, so that's your, all right, let, let, and I'm listening for key points <laughs> so as to interrupt with you on. What was that about? You, it was your, um, in, I don't want to say invention, but is, is it, was it your brainchild? It, it was my brainchild. Okay. I never got to put this. What is because it? sometimes you will have about 15 different pay sheets with the daily paid workers. Mm -hmm. And each pay sheet, they were making a check for the paymaster, one for the income tax man, one for NIS. And it was a million of so, so many checks he had to see about. And I said that was wasting his time and our time and government stationery. Yes. So I invented the batching system and I took it up to Mr. Harrison Williams who was then in charge and he said it sounds good you look for the different subheads you batch all those patients together from works department and when you make a big batch you total it you make sure you balance off on top that is what they use now okay. and then when you finish you make one big check pay master so you save in station you save in mm -hmm. time typing you save in time signing checks mm -hmm. The seven time for the pap the paymaster, so he would just come take the pay sheet and, go to the and, and decide then. who, what, what, because the, mm -hmm. how much money, how you want the money. And it was a beautiful system for which nobody ever credited me, but I didn't mind. I did it <laughs> All right. because we saved. So that would be your legacy. Ah, All right. Yes, so, so let's give you that honor. And of course, we, we are thankful. And it's still yeah. working today, you said? Yeah, it, yeah, it is Excellent. working, All yeah. Right. So uh, uh, let's go to the walk, because I, I want to stay. You, you, wanna, you like oh, it. No, no, because that is, uh, I think, what, what that did was to give uh, the, what, the country, the, or, or, or make Trinidad understand that, look, we here in Tobago will not tolerate. And when I did Definitely. the story with Mr. Uh, uh, Nathaniel Moore, he spoke about it. And of that. So I want your perspective as to how what happened when you actually came out of the parliament, cameras were in your face, and you had to say, listen, if Nathaniel walk, I walk. Talk yes. about the, the very famous uh, uh, statement. Let's talk about that. Because, you see, I looked up to Mr. Nathaniel as my senior in the political arena at that time. Mm -hmm. And we grew up together in politics in the Nar dynasty and these, you know. So we would discuss, and I felt that as Tobagonians, we have to discuss it and hold one head. head as, mm -hmm. So that's what I did. So when we discussed the issue, we realized that they were taking away all the authority from Tobago. And I said, no, we are not going to do that. Right. So they thought that I would have stayed with them. I said, no, no, no. If Nathaniel walked, I walked. <laughs> He's my leader <laughs> in, right. in the Senate. Okay, good. Right? Because we have to hold, we have to be united. Okay, okay. In one cause, and the cause was a good cause. All right. Did that cause falling out between you and your leader here in Tobago, Mr. Robinson? What was that like? Or no. what was there after after that 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 walk? What happened to you after that? Well, there was no no no. I think he he agreed with us. I mean, he supported us. And after that, well, I got a little baby jobs and so on. You know, I, I worked. I mean, Tobago really supported me, mm -hmm. and I thank God for that. Mm -hmm. And I was never never 
never repentant of having done that. Absolutely. If I had to do it today again, I would do you it would because do. you have to respect the people of Tobago, yeah. respect the autonomy, respect the Tobago House of Assembly. Mm -hmm. And I would say that I, as a child, I, I love Tobago, mm -hmm. and I was going to live in Trinidad. The minute I got promotion to Trinidad, they would send him out to Tobago and promotion. I said, Lord, why am I in Tobago all these years? So now I've come to love Tobago. Mm -hmm. I've worked hard. I have done a lot for our people, and I thank God because I've did things like teach classes, like even our deputy chief secretary right now, yeah. secretary of finance. Georgia. I nurtured him in the accounting field. Uh -huh. he, he was doing the accounting program, and uh, with um, Yuri, and he entered the program, and I encouraged him. I said, "You have a long way to go. You have promise in you," and I stuck with him, gave him extra lessons at a little course. And he did the first program, and then I said, look, you are the only student who has, what about 20 students who have stuck with the program and have passed. I called both Terari then, the guy at UV, and I said, listen, I want this young man to go on to level two. Wow. He said, um, when we started a week, I said, <clears throat> what you can do for me is enter him into level two. He'll have to travel to, to Trinidad on weekends. And I said, Joel, you have to travel to Trinidad on weekends? You have to go because you are going places. I didn't know where he was going. You are hmm. going places. Wow. And he did. Okay. Travel the Trinidad every weekend by that boat. Uh -huh. Did his courses, came out flying colors. Mm -hmm. And he came and I said, boy, mm -hmm. I think you're going higher, you know. Yeah. But you know what? I encourage him. And for today, I am glad I invested in Joel's life. Excellent. I'm All glad. right. So that's also one of your... Well, yes, the, uh, yes, he was, my, he was my biggest son. Exactly, all right. And of course, he's looking on, he's probably <laughs> smiling now. But anyway, let's go to Paula May Weeks, president, first female president of the Republic I of Trinidad. Her. Let's talk as a female uh, in the politics, and you have come out with, you know, flying colors. You've made a statement, you stood by your, your decision, and today you have no regrets of that. However, today we can boast that uh, Trinidad and Tobago has a female president. How does that make you feel? Proud. Well, TNT and of the woman who she is and of woman and a whole. She, I, I read her resume, her whole football, and I said, this woman seems to be a woman who can stand the test, who can lead our country. Mm -hmm. From the time they mentioned her, and I checked up on her and her. Uh -huh. And, uh, well, her inaugural speech, I don't do it verbatim like Vanilla, but oh, I enjoyed it. And I look up to her. And I pray for her that God will give her the wisdom and the strength to continue to lead our country until the time comes for she for her to do the office. Mm -hmm. I respect her. She's the only thing I said, oh she's so tall and strapping <laughs> and she's full and you know, and then she, she reaches out to the, the, the young the, the children, you see the, the youths and the young people she reaches out to. It warms the cockles of my heart. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right, well let's keep the cockles of your heart warm a little more. Uh, with potential, well, the young politicians that you see, obviously being president is, has nothing to do with being in politics. Obviously, uh, Arthur Napoleon was the first political uh, president. president. Yeah. Yeah? Uh, let's deal with other dreamers, women out there who are looking on. You would have taken a bold stand. You would have made your presence felt and so on. Other women who are looking on and wanting to aspire to high office, uh, what would you say to them? I would say go as high as possible. Educate yourself. And you know, I always said again, the basic manners, good manners, take you through life. Mm. I've studied in Canada, everywhere I go. Who raised you? I said, my mother. Mm. I mean, I'm from a very poor family, but you learn the basics. And all of our women in TNT, I have looked at them, and their mother and their parents raised them well. Basic hygiene, Basic good manners, etiquette. You know, you have to learn and then go to school. Learn your work well. Strive for the highest and respect people. Great. Uh, just name uh, a couple of women in politics or in prominence in terms of well, politics and leadership that you admire and you would like, you know, as an inspiration. One of my favorites, Dr. Eastland Mackenzie. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we were trying to she, get her here this morning. She was like my sister, yes. Uh -huh. um, you know, we Why? Why Dr. Mackenzie? Well, I interacted with her in the public service when she was working in community development. And we bonded from those days. We would do things together with God with her when she's going out to her meetings. And I learned from her. And she was always so energetic and so 
so vibrant and always wanted the best for women and for, for, for people. You know, she would do everything. And she has been a good role model. Mrs. Olive Sawyer is another one who yes. I looked up to in her days. Mm -hmm. She really was there for us. And there were a few men in Trinidad, too, in politics, who I looked up to. I would listen and listen to them, see what they have done. Even Barbara Burke, Santa Barbara, former Santa Barbara Burke mm -hmm. from Trinidad, she herself, I saw what she did for children and for orphans. And I looked around the world and said, our women can make a place in history. Excellent. Mm -hmm. We have done well. And uh, I even sent Senator Cynthia Alfred, oh, she was my buddy. Uh -huh. We were on different sides, but she was my buddy. We'd discuss things, talk, laugh, you know. I, it, it's so, it was a beautiful experience being a woman in politics. Excellent. And being in Tobago, I love Tobago. Right. I love the climate. I love the people, despite what, and I like to see Tobago progress. And I would well, I like to see more women get into politics and leadership, but they must have great respect for the men. Excellent, excellent. We want to thank you very, very much for your time and of course we enjoyed your conversation especially when you say uh if nathaniel walk i walk all right <laughs> yes <laughs> god bless you have yes. a great day and to you thank you very much all right at this point in time we go for a break when we come back we have lots more for you see you then
back and of course we are coming to you live from the legislature of the THA what we are looking at or what we were looking at outside there is where the president will make her first official uh, entrance uh, to the legislature and just to remind you there will not be a parade there will be what is called a quarter guard uh, to greet Her, Her Excellency Madam Polo May Weeks. A quarter guard comprises of a maximum of 14 soldiers. It may or may not be inspected. In the past, uh, the president would vi uh, president visit, there was a guard of honor, but for this occasion, it will only be a quarter guard. All right. At this point in time, let's welcome our guest this morning. I'm yet adding one of the first ladies. And we're mentioning first ladies this morning. And <laughs> she's, she's smiling. And Madam and Mrs. Uh, Deborah Mormigans. Good morning, my dear. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. And good morning to our viewers in Trinidad, Tobago, and elsewhere. Very good. Pleasure and I say first lady and you smile. All right, let me tell you why. Yes. Because, and you would, you know, put, the, 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 put it into perspective. You were the first female to have contested an independent election in the THA and become the first female independent uh, uh, representative. Just tell us a little bit about that. That is correct. Um, it was in 1996, the THA elections. Mm -hmm. I had just resigned or terminated myself in the Senate. Mm -hmm. And I came back to Tobago expecting to settle into life in my practice, which you know, um, I am an attorney at law. And I, I, sub, I submitted yes. to the persuasions of many people that I should contest the election. Mm -hmm. Of course, I knew that neither of the two offerings were to my liking. Mm -hmm. So at first I didn't consider it, but you know, more and more as the pressure mounted, mm -hmm. I said, why not? Mm -hmm. May lose, I may win, let's go for it. And that's what I did. And even now I always am grateful to so many people who really supported me. Because right. it wouldn't have been done unless they had, you know, came yeah. out the way they did. All right, let's talk about the rigors of campaigning as a female uh, going up against these men uh you're going up as an independent first time in tobago i've never heard of of that before what was that like the whole process in terms of the snares the jazz yes. where she going she feels she bright let's hear yes hear yeah, the all whole. of that all, right, all of that two that i remember is that um i come from a community of bethel yes. and in bethel in the long days gone by they were always anti pnm my father for some reason, he decided he's PNM. He was a PNM counselor. And mm -hmm. I don't know if I got some of it from him, mm -hmm. but what I remember is a woman saying um, <laughs> in Bethel Palace, this Deborah, for years she put a crazy go up for PNM. Now she come crazy to going up for <laughs> independence. Yeah. So you know, mm -hmm. I always remember that one, and of course. The people are jail and a steel man cook your husband food. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of thing. Yes, yes. And um, well, many would tell you, Deborah, I, you know, I'm a long standing member of my party, whether it was PNMO at the time, it would have been DSC. Yes. But I would give you the vote as I know oh, you. Yeah. Some would say, Deborah, I know you're good enough, but I can't go against my party. So you got all types. Mm -hmm. And of course, when you're on the platform, you would get the, the heckle. Yes. Thank God we didn't have any missiles or rotten right. eggs good. or anything. People listened respectfully. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you got your little heckles. I remember a guy was heckling. I don't know, every time I meet him now, I say, well, you get a voice to heckle so loud. He, he was <laughs> he really, to you? yes, he, he, was, to you? he was coming so strong. Yeah. You know, usually you could, your mic is good yes. enough to take care but of it. But he never covered his But he, he was in the audience. Uh -huh. It was, a, you know, a road meeting. Mm -hmm. And he, his, his voice yes. is my good friend. Up I didn't know. even up to now, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't know it was him at the yeah. time. I subsequently yeah. found out. I said, but that voice, man, you could throw off anybody. I but thank God, no, I, right. I kind of prevailed. Let's talk about your role in the assembly as an independent. Mm -hmm. And what was that like? Because obviously you have to deal with the, the same heckling, the same crosstalk. Yeah. How was that like? You know, I remember um, Mr. Carly Dick was 
just quite recently, and all of them and I remain friends, um, was telling me uh, some of the ways, I didn't even know that, that they, they employed to neutralize me and to heckle me. Um, I got my fair share of heckles um, in, the, in the chamber. I, I, my recollection escapes me now, but I know that I bought, brought, I think, a couple of, um, what you call that, motions, yes. I would think. Um, but generally, it was a very um, harmonious relationship. Mm -hmm. There were people, well, of course, there was Mr. Ochoa Charles. He was the, um, he was the chief secretary mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. We had a little running. I don't know if you remember, there was a time when um, he increased salaries in Tobago um, without, to me without authority. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, I'm not taking it. <laughs> so I didn't take it for months. Yeah. And I can't remember. Eventually, I got a nice package. <laughs> because they pile up. <laughs> pile up. Eventually, right. when he got the permission or whatever okay. it was. Okay. Yeah. So let's leave it. And, and let's talk about the significance of your presence. What were you able to claim as a legacy? Or over there? Let's talk about your contribution in the house as to what you would have established as a legacy that we can boast of. Well, I think most fundamentally is the fact that as a woman, I was able to sit in the assembly and challenge the established order. Because if you look at things now, people, women, men, women, they are either on one side or the other. Mm -hmm. So they conform with either the government side, they can't go mm -hmm. out of that, no matter what they're thinking, which is really what drove me to, to go independent, because I knew that there were several things, measures that would come or policies adopted that I would not be in favor of. And I, I couldn't see myself just sitting quiet and taking it because I'm in this party. So for me, I thought my legacy would have, in, in the chamber would have been to show that women have views which will not necessarily conform with yours, the established one, and they could speak it out, and they could challenge, uh, and they could formulate it and stand behind it. So, uh, if anything, now, of course, we don't have much examples of that because, as I said, most women are either on one side or the other. Mm -hmm. You don't find women really bucking the system or challenging the, the not externally, which I'm told is not done. I mm -hmm. did something that I should not have done. Many people said that. But that's the reason I try to stay away from parties now because yeah, I okay. know yeah, when I have a contrary view, I can't stay quiet. Okay. All right. There's another legacy that you spoke, we spoke previously about on another show, Community Legends, about the patients. And of course, you represented patients. Better better. patients and, at that time. Right. And the legacy of, well, I point to it as that, as a technical institute, they Correct. are patients. Correct. Talk to us Correct. about the yeah. establishment of that. How did that come about during your tenure as independent talk to us that's correct it's something i'm very proud about um we established what is called the empowerment foundation of tobago we call it effort eft and our motto was that every every achievement begins with an effort so without you exactly. making that effort. first step effort mm -hmm. you're not anywhere and that organization has accomplished quite a lot over the years we were able to acquire lands at Patience Hill, where we've put up a massive structure. That was in the 1997 era. That's when we started. And it prevails to today. It is still um, empowering. We did a lot of courses during that time, courses in, in food processing, courses every aspect of computer literacy. Um, this thing, video, like a couple guys who were with you and moved even to the, um, TV6, came out of, that. of that. That, okay. that. I think we trained about over 2,000 people. I was checking, you know, mm -hmm. just during the 10-year period that we were at, at our height. Mm -hmm. Right now, the building housed the MIC. Mm -hmm. um, we don't do much training anymore, but a very proud moment. I passed through patients yesterday, and I saw where the West Side Steel Orchestra Occupies. was. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we, when we bought that land, we were able to divide it hand that piece in fact they were the ones who got us to go after the land because as their representative they said they wanted a place mm -hmm. and where they were on was owned by mr york and i went to him and he gave me he sold me the, or he supported me and it wasn't owned by him he supported me to acquire it 
us. I don't want to say me, <laughs> yeah. because as I said, there were several people who supported this effort. Yeah. Have to mention Mr. Benedict Armstrong, Sir Gerald McFarlane. Uh, they were at the forefront of Miss Marcia Washington at the time. And we acquired it. If you see the steel band, they now set up. They're comfortable. They know that nobody would try to get them off as was happening before. Mm -hmm. Then we went to Bethel, mm -hmm. and we, that is where the, 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 the core of the foundation operated, where mm -hmm. we were doing most of the training, right. etc. Great. So your legacy project would be the establishment of, of that institution. Of the That's Very correct. Good. All right. From there, uh, Deborah Moore McGinnis went into uh, politics, leadership from that standpoint. Well, of course, you were a leader, given that you were the first female to have uh, be an independent in the assembly. Let's come to the establishment of the political party, PEP. Uh, and, of course, we know how that went. Of course, the ring bang was uh, in the mix. And, of course, we know you went down and protested against ring bang and so on. As a leader, a female uh, leadership, or female leadership, we're going into that. We come to miss uh, the president presently. But from that standpoint, of course, it was a whole different ball game. You had to lead uh, uh, an entire party. Talk to us from that. Yeah, well, we thought we were having significant accomplishments and this seemed like something that could ride us into the Tobacco House of Assembly. Yes. <laughs> we're naive, I guess. But um, <laughs> we, we, and it was really good while it lasted. Mm. We formed our party, mm. the stalwarts again were there, and uh, yeah. they, um, we, we, we went full steam ahead. We had our constitution, we had our symbol, and what I liked about um, that era, that party forming thing, is, and I believe in this, we were able to nurture agreements, disagreements. We had a very comfortable and collaborative approach within us. We, I can't remember us having, because I like to listen to others, even the dissenters, and to see how we can accommodate their views in whatever we are planning. People wouldn't always agree with you, and that is something that bothers me in our society. We have to learn to hear other objectors' views mm -hmm. and accommodate it, or when you don't agree, you, you show why you don't agree, etc. And that is what we had perfect mm -hmm. in PEP. As a leader, I think that is one of my strongest points. Mm -hmm. I can listen to others, I can consider, because it's only listen. You have to consider what they are saying, wait up, and see if it makes sense, see if it could be accommodated. Mm -hmm. And if not, you have to be willing to say, no, I don't think so. And if it can be, you proceed with the assistance of even those who are making the suggestion so they feel they are a part of the baby that emerges out of, out of All right. So, so let's stay there a little bit. And, and so, of course, but let's talk about the, <laughs> the, the, well, eventually you lost the election. That's correct. And how did you treat with that as a leader would have led, and I could talk a little bit about the, the, the campaign against the ring bang. But yes. Uh, if you want to touch a little bit of that. And well, yeah, you remember. <laughs> <laughs> we remember. <laughs> we were, yes. we were at, um, we were protesting down at Shaw Park. Exactly. I remember my dear friend Beverly Ramsey Moore and uh, others. Well, she, others. Yeah. And again, we were there. We were about. I would say we had about. I think about twenty people, of yes. the, the 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 core group. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when the cars were passing, some would blow their horn in, in support. Oh but oh boy, you wouldn't want to hear the comments. <laughs> well, you know, go man, cook a your husband food. <laughs> well, that was so that was almost every right. every other car. I, yeah. <laughs> I actually know. mentioned that so as to get you know the pros and the, 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 the pros and cons oh, of, of course, leadership. Yes. And as a woman, yes. how that would resonate mm -hmm. uh, and so on. And of course, you took that and you moved on. Yeah, I always yeah. say though that one of the experiences I have, which sometimes I. See Say, makes me not want to go back into. I was campaigning in Space Island because you know it's the whole of Tobago, and we campaign late into the night. And I'm walking through the back of a house and going to another house, and my foot went down into what could have only been the soak away. Oh or, my uh, goodness! <laughs> and every time I remember that. <laughs> 
right, okay. Yeah, it was, that was an experience. <laughs> all right, very good. All right. So, so the, the, the Deborah Moore Miggins leadership, and of course, uh, today you are uh, attorney at law, you're practicing attorney and so on. But there, you, you also uh, was one of the Tobago senators mm -hmm. who had um, uh, 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 made a statement, rather, in the in the senate uh and i want us to take us through and of course you were almost uh, president of the senate yeah i served as vice president for one session yeah. uh, you know it yeah. wasn't you don't long consider but that too much no, well i consider everything okay. but i just wanted to fit into the scheme there are mm -hmm. people who serve so much longer i had a day on, on the job yeah. and i really people thought it was a really great thing so mm -hmm. now i believe it had to have been a great thing mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. But um, in terms of the what happened in, in the, the Senate, Senate yes. uh, it's a it's a story. I had been appointed to serve on a committee to recommend changes for Tobago, mm -hmm. constitutional changes, and we did submit those changes. But my view was always it would affect the Tobago House of Assembly in a mighty way. Mm -hmm. And before it was um, voted on, I, I thought that the Tobago House of Assembly should have been given an opportunity to consider it and make further changes if necessary, or to suggest mm. further changes if necessary, because this is where it would be operating. Yes. And we see that come to roost right now where the, the act still has its, its little places, mm. snags, and right. that sort of thing. But that was an uphill, and as you, you must know that Mr. Robinson was then the head of the, the person who would have had to uphold it. Yes. And he was on his way to becoming president with a very stiff timetable. And I thought that the THA was sacrificed for that, um, that, account, that achievement. Mm -hmm. So it, it went to the, the parliament without that input, which I thought was necessary. And again, I couldn't stay quiet as the voting <laughs> went around. Exactly. I said, Deborah, can you really in your conscience Big vote? Yes. 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 And when it came to me, uh, the best I did was abstain, which again, you're not supposed to do if your mm. party is going for something. Yeah, you're supposed to. Yes, yeah. you're supposed you to breach the, the breach the hold your nose <laughs> and say, You said, I, I am not taking this. I am going to with my yeah, position. And I, right. I said, well, this would be the end of it. I didn't stay on. I resigned after that. And I felt very comfortable to date. I feel comfortable. Very you know, you know it's no skin off my back. All right, Ms. Miggins, let's deal now with our present president, mm -hmm. Paula May Weeks, uh, Madam, well, Her Excellency Paula May Weeks. Sure. She's going to visit, uh, she's here today mm -hmm. uh, with a historic visit. From, as an attorney herself, uh, she's serving in the, in the, uh, uh, in the judiciary. Yes. Uh, from a very high level. What does that mean for other young budding uh, women who want to pursue law as a career and, and just... Well, I think she has shown a path to great achievements by going through law, um, distinguishing herself, of course, and uh, being highly favored and well supported to become the president. There are, I guess there are several, um, several milestones along the way because having been appointed to the Court of Appeal mm -hmm. in what I think was a relatively short time, yeah. would have been one of those. And she gave, a, recently I was reading a couple of her judgments for a matter I was preparing for. Mm -hmm. She gave solid judgments, well-reasoned, well-articulated. As you know, she is a woman of, of proper articulation and words and etc. I always admire that with her. Mm -hmm. and she has that tinge of sense of humor yes. which always helps so i guess and then she was serving in the church which is something that she was very high in the church you know that right. i think she was the financial controller mm. or something yeah. so she in her in her body she packaged quite a lot of of important mm. achievements and it was only the next step now, people could do all of that and, not, and be overlooked when the time comes because of all different types of reasons. Yeah. But her stars lined up well, mm -hmm. and I think, it, of course, we all believe it was an excellent choice. Mm -hmm. She deserved it, having regard to her track record over the years in Trinidad and Tobago. All right, so all the young ladies are looking on and they're saying, I'm so inspired by what Mrs. Mormigans just spoke to her whole life. Uh, other women, and of course the President, Her, ex Her Excellency. What would you want to say to young women who want to achieve 
in in this field of law mm -hmm. and of course life. well the first thing you start with is your desire your drive to do it i mean i have seen many people come into law who just came into law to say they become a lawyer if you you have to really have that spirit of you know law is different things law is being able to articulate law is being able to research and do cases law means you have to stay up late in the night early in the morning you see me here is about three hours <laughs> i managed to get right. this morning of course i went to awake in battle too i can't right. forget right. forget yeah. that so you, when you decide you want to go to law you must know that it's what you want and that you can stay the course because people have gone into law and come out they have gone to do other things they have come out of the court system and because they frustrated they, they don't like the system because the court system could frustrate okay. you really frustrate you right now after nearly 40 years i am kind of real frustrated because i have not seen the kind of progress that mm. i thought you would have achieved at this point in time mm. but once a person is satisfied that that is what they want they they have the best examples mm. they have not only polar may we there are several examples and of course I like to, sh to say Kamala mm -hmm. is also Excellent. a good example of yes. somebody who mm -hmm. did their law and have and been using it now in a different arena in Excellent. politics Excellent. and ruffling quite a lot of feathers Excellent. whether you agree or don't yeah. agree. So, you know, pattern your life, select somebody or various persons mm -hmm. because different persons have different strengths. Pattern your life on those that you think uh, have the, the skills and the qualities that you, you, your spirit gravitates excellent, to. Excellent. And then the rest well, should be useful. I want to thank you, ma'am, for your time. And Not of course, it was indeed a pleasure. And we, for those of you, you've learned so much. I had an uh, opportunity to share with, uh, well, uh, well I, sh I got a lot of information from Ms. Moore Megan. So at this point in time, we want to thank you for, well, viewing. Stay tuned. We do have more as we take in uh, the, the present of the her. Uh, Excellency here at the legislature. See you immediately after. Thank you.
and our friends viewing across the world, we thank you for that. And of course, we are here at the legislature of the THA, and we are here acknowledging and, of course, celebrating the presence of the first female president and her official visit to Tobago. Our guest, well, <laughs> we continue with Ms. Toppin, Ms. Vanella Toppin, first uh, act, female uh, acting prime minister in the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago from Tobago. And I mean, I, I like to say that, you know, because it, it's, it's good for us here in Tobago to have had that and, to, and, and it's good for women. So, you know, I mean, just have a further comment on that. that. We had that chat already, but just to further, you know, speak yes, to Yes, and, and of course, I want to endorse what my, co my, my schoolmates, mm -hmm. Deborah Momigins and Agnes. You all went to school together? Yes, we, we uh, make girls now. We are, uh, Sky Bush, Bishop, Bishops, Bishops, Bishop. Bishop. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, 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 Bishops, yes. Uh, um, there was something that Bishops High School used to do. I don't know if they do it still. Mm -hmm. We used to have a literary and debating society. Oh, yes. And we met at that time when I was in, in fifth form, sixth form, six, nine, 67, 68. I left school in 1970. We, had, we met every Wednesday, and it was compulsory for fifth and sixth formers. Mm -hmm. That literary and, literary and debating society, and it was chaired by Mr. Blackett, who was the principal. Mm -hmm. And at that, we did all kinds of current affairs, and we learned to debate. And, and even when I was in the parliament, people asked us, how come people from Tobago could stand up and speak <laughs> so without <what>? any um, <laughs> votes <laughs> yes. for any, yes. uh, on anything for any length of time? Yes. And they cited, they called those people like Agnes and, and Dr. Mark and Annette and, and Pat, you know, and they, they talk about all of these people, mm. Pam and... Uh, I always said, part of our training was that wow. literary, and literary and debating society Great. in Bishop's High School. Good. We used and to do mock United Nations assemblies. You had to pick a nation, uh -huh. and you are the prime minister of that nation. So when you come to the thing, you have to present the views of the nation. Wow. We used to deal with world issues. Let me ask you. And it really did shape us. You had to be able to speak. Very good. Uh, well, you, uh, my, what I recall, recall is public speaking. And yes. I don't know if that is the same thing that you're talking about. Well, yes. It's similar. Yes. But, yes. but how important it is for that to be part, I know it's part of the curriculum to some extent. It may not be as... Oh, it was after school. Oh, so it was not necessarily part of the no, curriculum. No, it was after so it was school. voluntarily... No, you had, had to, to be, in Bishop's in our time, you had to belong to a, a several clubs. Right. So you have to pick. Mm -hmm. So like for me, I had something every day because I like basketball, netball, Whatever cricket, whatever going on, dance, choir, whatever going on, yes. I did. Mm. And my parents allowed me. Good. So little, I mean, we had to be there, but mm. that was compulsory for those forms. Very good. So right. you know, you know, the okay. school could really shape you. All right. So three very mm -hmm. significant females was on set here this morning, including yourself, mm -hmm. in terms of being the first ladies in those positions that you all would have held. Yes. The significant, the. Uh, you know, the, the, the marks that you would have made in our history or the notch that you would have carved, as it were. Um, when we look at all of that, it means, therefore, that we cannot continue, or those people or men and women, as you say, there are some women who believe that women, no woman enter lead me. There are women who would tell you that. They prefer a man. You mentioned that earlier yes, this morning. Yes, yes. How do we convince or get uh, women to understand that when another woman is in a prominence, do not see it as, um, you know, being upstaged or feeling envious or, uh, uh, you know, saying what she playing kind of thing. You have that, and you spoke to that earlier. How do we get other women to support women in that field? Well, my philosophy, my philosophy goes back to the fact that I'm a Christian, I'm a Methodist, and I have a very excellent Methodist upbringing. Mm -hmm. My Christianity does not allow me to be resentful mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. criticized, or, or it does not allow that. Yeah. It's uh, like Deborah was saying there, you listen to everybody, and even the dull and the ignorant, as it is the writer said, they too have their story. Mm -hmm. And I don't consider anybody dull or ignorant. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a contribution to me, yeah? some kind of contribution. Mm -hmm. And some of the world's greatest geniuses are actually 
classified as autistic people mm -hmm. for them on a keyboard or wow. a piano. You know? Yeah. When I taught in the United States of America, I taught special education students and I was able to teach them music. And it is remarkable how they would pick up music. Different for different skills, different some on percussion like on the clock and spiel or mm -hmm. we call the um we call it um the, the xylophone. Mm -hmm. According according to its it but that's a kind of instrument. Yeah. They use them in the in the regiment band and the policeman and so on. And you could get children with all of those challenges to do all kinds of things, mm -hmm. to learn all kinds of things. So everybody is important, okay. everybody is significant. I want to go to and we have to learn that as women to accommodate each other and each other's weaknesses and strengths and so and support each other. Very good. All right. I but want to go to a point that Miss Megan's made about mm -hmm. as a woman campaigning. Mm -hmm. uh, the kind of statements that were made or slurs that were thrown at her, go home and cook your husband food, that kind of thing. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm I deliberately going six. there because yeah. you would have been on the campaign trail as well. You uh, uh, was uh, well the, the representative of yes. Tobago West, East, uh, East rather. Yes. Uh, what was that like? Did you go through that kind of you know statements yes. kind of thing? And how does that affect you or women uh, having well, those statements made? Well, it would be women who would tell you that you know. Women. Yes. Mm. I don't go over say, well, okay, well, this yes, is women who <laughs> tell you that. No. How, how do you deal with that? No, with our, in our nurturing for the time, you're little and thing, and I want to talk to everybody. If you know, I, I, yes. I could talk to the big people and the little people and the everybody in between, yes. too. Eh? Mm. We learn from small, you got dolly for Christmas, and you know how to buy, you, you learn yes. to buy a baby. To be a mommy, you dolly. To be, yeah. Yeah. so it's a mental thing. So you learn, yeah. like, 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 I love to sew. Mm -hmm. I learn to sew mm -hmm. on making dolly clothes. Mm -hmm. you, you understand? Yes. That kind of, you know. Mm -hmm. So we trained to, to be think that way. a woman. We trained to be uh, a wife. Mm -hmm. You might not get married officially. But we train to be a wife, we train to be a mother, we train to manage the house and so mm -hmm. that's our training. Mm -hmm. So the older people who would say, especially older women, go and cook your husband food. That is what they know. <laughs> they don't know anything about going out to work. My mother was not a housewife. Yeah, she that's was a, a that's another us. significant thing. Right. Eh? Good, good. Because she mm -hmm. we could eat fridge food. Mm -hmm. You know, some people can't eat fridge food. Mm -hmm. Because your mother had to cook. But yes. if your mother had to cook, you had to you warm up up the fridge, yeah. to eat mm -hmm. fridge food. Mm -hmm. You actually had a kerosene fridge before there was electricity in, mm -hmm. in government also. Right. So, you know, I don't mind right. because I like to cook this too. Looks, yes. So I, I like the feminine role. Right. I don't want to come back as a man. You know, I mm -hmm. love being a woman. Oh, very good, very good. But I want to be able to be a woman who is, according to my brothers, my mm -hmm. mother was a married bachelor. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. I want to be able to rule my destiny mm -hmm. i all don't right. want to be yeah. you know so so this is they told me all kinds of things right. man Good. when i was going to ue and i got a scholarship in ue mm -hmm. to continue into a master's phd program and i went to the assembly to say that i needed time more time away from my job and i went to the the the, the, the what's he called i'm the chief he was the chairman at the time and it was dr jefferson davidson mm -hmm. Dr. Jefferson Davidson, my good friend. You know, he said to me, I don't to stay with my mind and mother. Where are you going to school for? You understand? <laughs> no, uh, not as a doctor. He went to school. Right. But as far as he was concerned, time a man thing. Yes. Right? Right. So, but my mother never taught okay. that. Right. that. So, no, okay. <laughs> so, we, well, the world is, uh, <laughs> uh, the men are more accommodating. Mm -hmm. I've uh, supported women in no, leadership. No. Uh, I want you to tell I'm me. I'm worried about that. Too. Okay, now, what, when I say that, I'm getting to the point. Yes. Now, there are men who will support the women in leadership. Of course, mm -hmm. they will be the one that endorsed her, supports her. Yes. Hillary had a whole state of men behind her. Yes. And a number of other women who uh, eventually hold leadership position, hold prime minister rules and so on, are supported by men. Yes. Those men who are in the mindset that a woman's place is in the room still. Because yes. if you heard what 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 said to you yes. by certain yes. men, yes. how do we get to the point where we understand that it is a side by side, not one behind the other kind of mindset? The I, work has to be I done from, primary, know. from earliest oh, childhood. Well, maybe, but I don't know what is happening with the role of man as vis-a-vis -vis the role of woman. Mm. 
because you see that now we are complaining that our boys and men are not, not performing. performing and at all of that. Opinion. I don't say, like to say that mm. because I think that we are structuring or teaching mm. to accommodate <laughs> a, a model that suits girls better. Mm. You find that there's a different way for a man to think. It's a, 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 there's a masculine way, I think, eh? mm. and a feminine way, and I'm trained and teaching so I know. Boys learn differently, differently from girls, girls. Right. mostly, all right. not all of the time. The, if you teach guys by doing, you get their attention more than if you teach them mm -hmm. by notes and writing things and copying down and making your book neat and all that. All right. So you have identified yes. a, 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 an area that we may not be looking at because mm -hmm. if you as a teacher would have identified that. Yes. How many teachers in the system recognize that that needs to be spoke, treated with? Well, so as to fix the imbalance in terms of girls outgoing boys, how do we get a balance as to get the boys to perform as well? Well, training and education have to be after training and education is in you, after you have inculcated or you have, you know, you have to now have the intellect mm. to know how to use that training mm. to work to, to, to get success as a teacher. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as I'm concerned, and as Daphne Coffey taught us at Mausica Teachers College, mm -hmm. teaching and learning are reciprocal. Mm -hmm. There's a reciprocity in teaching mm -hmm. and learning. Mm -hmm. If you think you are a teacher mm -hmm. and you say, I have taught this subject, I have taught this, this um, topic, mm -hmm. and the child has not learned it, you have not taught it. Okay. You have told them about it, you talk about it, you talk around the topic. But if the person has not learned what you taught, what you think you taught, you have not taught it. Okay. So there's this reciprocity between teaching and learning. Mm. Right? So what our problem is here is in our society where we have so many failures, I think, in my humble opinion, there's no supervision of teaching to ensure that learning is taking place. Mm. If there is supervision mm. of teaching, mm -hmm. if the teacher is held to making sure that the child knows what they did, you talk about, we will not have all this failure. Wow. Now in the America, I, saw, I taught in the United States of America, in New York, the principal and the assistant principal, they hire you and they fire you. At the drop of a hat, they fire you. You have to write, have to prepare notes of lessons. You have to have five notes a day. Mm -hmm. And you have to teach for them to hear. Mm -hmm. They walk in at any time. They will walk into your classroom mm -hmm. and listen to you and appraise you and write, mm -hmm. write you up. All right. And if for some reason when they test the child, the child does not have Come up the knowledge, yes. you are the person who is wow. being. In our so, society, uh -huh. we say the child fail, come and try. You have a class of three children from A, B, C to standard five. And when they come up there, they cannot get 30% in the exam. Mm. You as a teacher, so the child has not failed, you know. Mm. The teacher Fail. has failed. Okay. And this is, how, right. this is how I view it. All right. Let, let's stay so, <laughs> in, the, in, the, so, in the education system and yes. let's deal with the absence of men. Yes. Uh, years ago when I was in primary school, they had a number of men, mm -hmm. almost equal to the amount of female teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, well, of course, women uh, play a, a more yeah. caring role in the but teaching there profession. there reasons for that, you know. Why was that so? Well, in, this, in, in the beginning, let me call it in the beginning, the time you're talking about, you kind of know about it, I mean, you know. <laughs> yes, there was a time when women could only be teachers yes, if yes. they did not get married. Okay. Once you got married, you had to stop being a teacher. Right. That was the system. Okay. And when Eric Williams, Dr. Eric Williams, came in to office, he made sure that the women who were in the system, who were married or wanted to get married, because they didn't train women who were in the system who were married women, he had what they call emergency teachers college for women, mm. a special year, 1958 was the first one or the second one. And 1959 might have been the second one, or, or 57, 58, or 58, and 59. And then those married women could stay in. Okay. Now, also, if you became pregnant when you were teaching, you were fired. 
if if you were not married if you were not married yes okay you understand yes, yes. so that's so the, mm -hmm. it's just me <laughs> yeah. mentor now the men also got fired if it was a church school mm -hmm. if they impregnated somebody they also oh. got fired if they knew okay but, but it, it's not easy to know which man because the man said uh, all the <laughs> men not said me. Not me. <laughs> it wasn't me. All right, okay. And the women were so that is why there was such a preponderance of men. Very good. So after they started allowing women to be married and have baby and take because even when I was in teachers' college in 72, 74, if any of us women got pregnant during the time in teachers' college, they send us home. Okay. Without being married. Okay. So it was that that made that men, men, men thing. And then the women, when they, as, as Eric Williams opened it up to the women, the women started to teach more and more. Mm -hmm. And the men got more and more All right. fed up with I being wonder, there. Yes. All right. So we, yes. we, we're just about ready to wrap up. But I just want yes. us to point to some women in politics. Women, mm -hmm. uh, Pam Nichols. Now, I want you to tell me, uh, from you, when you looked on while you were in the teaching service and you saw women in politics, mm -hmm. who were some of the women that you said, listen, um, maybe I would want to be like her or uh, admire her <coughs> from that time. You know, that's an interesting question. I never wanted to be in politics. You know. <laughs> Although I was always very close to Pam, Pam, and, and yes. them. Yeah. They are my, actually my cousins as well as my friends. Right. And I grew up in Charlottesville with mm -hmm. them being really good role models. Right. And still today, you know, I look at them as mm -hmm. that. And it, Pam, Pat, my sister Patricia, you know. Mm -hmm. There were families like that. Mm -hmm. There were several different families that I admired. No, I taught at Scarborough Sec with Annette and with Pam and Pam. I, I took Annette's place mm. after she went right. to university mm. with Pam and Pat and they continue to be good old mothers. Mm. And Pam used to come in you know, well dressed every day and she used to wear the jackets and so on. And she used to put her jacket over the chair when she got in. She always impeccably dressed them but I had them like that from small. And we used to tell her, you're not for here, you know. You are going to last here. You for somewhere else. Okay. And lo and behold, she went on to, yeah, yeah she yeah. went on to think. Mm. So it is not as if I wanted to follow her. Right. Because I always was with them and never wanted to be in politics. Okay. But the day that Prime Minister Manning declared the sporting declaration the second time, I became a politician that day. Mm. I was never in politics. Right. Okay. So, so it, it's... When, when Kamala Prasad Bissessa became the leader of the opposition, I said, you know, I feel I could follow that lady. I want her to okay. jump in here. Okay. Okay. Right? So, so, yeah. And then I told Mr. Jack, yeah. I want to be a, a senator. Okay. No, and, then jump in. and then he said, um, nah, just now, I'm going to call her an election. And I said, no, two and a half years ago. He said, he called an election. Bam, election call. He come back. You ready? <laughs> I see, yes. but I, I know nothing about politics. Right, okay. but, <laughs> yeah, right, but so Pam and yeah. they, they, I mean, all right. Pam, so, those yeah. people. All right, fine. So we want to thank you again, and of course, oh, I'm closing. Thank you for having me. Uh, I mean, you yeah. said you were closing already, but um, it was indeed a pleasure <laughs> and always easy to speak with, and of course, to have a conversation <laughs> on so many issues. And we can go here, we can do history, we can do so many things. And, and of course, we could do the arts. And, and some yeah, other. we could we <laughs> could talk about all kinds of things. All right, so right now we're making costumes. Very good. Costume for Ghana. Yeah. All right, we wait all that another time. All right, with that, we want to thank you all for viewing Rise and Shine this morning. A wonderful morning indeed. Historic morning. As the uh, President of the Republic, Her Excellency Paula May Weeks will visit the chamber and make her inaugural speech here in Tobago. Well, not yes. for speech in Tobago, officially. So with that, we want to thank you for viewing Rise and Shine. Of course, I will not be inside Cup of Tea this morning. Dijam will take you to the paces with that. Embrace the urgency of today for tomorrow is a mystery. You better be saying so long on behalf of all the technical team that put, uh, happened to put this program together. Yes. See you immediately. Well, see you tomorrow. I'm out of here. Bye-bye.